with those Tesla Bet. shares sliding lower as you move through the day. They're down a little bit more than 10 percent right now. Somehow it's levitating, and I think it's Elon Musk is the greatest salesman in the world. He paints this vision of an unlimited future. I think they're doomed. I'm skeptical. Private enterprise will not ever lead a space frontier. Tesla's a sell, sell, sell. You don't want to own this stock. You don't want to lease it. Heck, you, don't even, you shouldn't even rent the darn thing. It, it's an overpriced car company, and they have to become a car manufacturer. And becoming a car manufacturer is a lot more difficult than becoming a high-tech darling. Nothing's, nothing's working. This is an allegory of the Titanic taking on water after hitting the iceberg and then tying up to a freighter that's going down. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that, uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. Rock, verify, range go. Range green. The flight computer has control of the vehicle. A well, a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. A successful entrepreneur is probably coming in all sizes, shapes, and flavors. Some of the things I've described already, I think, are very important. I think uh, really uh, an, an obsessive nature with respect to the quality of the product. R really, r really liking what you do. What, whatever area that you get into, um, given that, you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. If you don't like it, life is too short. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. We had just one computer, so the website was up during the day and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. You just, you just keep going and get it done. You put $90 billion, like 50 years worth of breaks, into, into solar and wind, to, 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 to Solyndra and Fisker and Tesla and Enter One. I mean, I, I had a friend who said, you don't just pick the winners and losers, you pick the losers. I'm available 24-7 to, to help solve issues. Right. I call me 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning, I don't care. We didn't just repay the principal, we actually repaid it with interest um, and, and a bonus payment. So ultimately the, uh, the U.S. taxpayer actually made a profit of, a t of over $20 million on this loan. Just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. A natural human tendency is wishful thinking. So a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? Your product or service needs to be much better. It can't be a little bit better. You know, I think my, my sort of drive to get it done is somewhat disconnected from hope, enthusiasm, or anything else. I just, I, I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm, motivation. I just give, every, give it everything I've got, irrespective of, of what the circumstances may be. But I think people can choose to be not ordinary. You know, they, they, uh, they can choose to not necessarily conform to the conventions that were taught to them by their parents. Yes, I think, I think it's possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. I think also just, just um, don't, you know, don't be afraid of new arenas. Uh, you know, you can get a book, you can learn something, um, and, and experiment with your hands and, you know, just 
make it happen. Find a way or make a way to, to get something done. Not being motivated by personally by money is not the same as saying that I think SpaceX shouldn't make money. In fact, it's very important that SpaceX is profitable or we will not be able to earn the money necessary to continue future developments. It's like the Nike slogan, you know, just do it. Uh, that's, you know, um, you know, just showing up is half the battle. You, you gotta try hard to do it and don't be afraid of failure. Um, you also need to be rooted in reality. Um, so you shouldn't, it, it's easy to get high in your own supply. You've gotta not be afraid to innovate, but also don't delude yourself into thinking something's working when it's not. Um, or you're going to get fixated on a, on a bad solution. You go to the very basic laws of physics, the things to which we believe to be extremely well demonstrated. In other words, the reason they call it a law is that no one has ever demonstrated an exception to that, ever. As Edison said, you know, it's 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. I think it's, it's really a mindset. You have to decide we're going to try to do things uh, differently. Well, provided that they're better. You shouldn't do things differently just because they're different. They need to be different and better. Um, but I think you just have to sort of decide. Let's, let's think beyond the normal stuff. There's this you know, great holy grail potential in the future. Um, you, you have to stay grounded in the short term. So, you know, because if you don't do things that pay the bills, you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to achieve the ultimate long-term objective. Um, but it's nice to have that sort of holy grail uh, long-term potential out there as an inspiration for, for coming to work. No, I'm a volunteer. I mean, I don't need the money. Um, there's nothing, I, I mean, I, it's not like I'm sitting here saying I wish I could buy such and such a thing. I could buy it. Um, I get paid minimum wage, actually. I don't even get overtime. But I think people can choose to be not ordinary. You know, they, they, they can choose to not necessarily conform to the conventions that were taught to them by their parents. Yes, I think, I think it's possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. Well, it's like the Nike slogan, you know, just do it. Definitely one of the best days of my life, and I think also for a lot of people here at SpaceX, uh, it's the, the culmination of a, of a dream. I messed up the first three launches. The launches failed. Unfortunately, the fourth launch, which was the, the, that was the last money that we had for Falcon 1, the fourth launch worked, or it would have been, that would have been it for, for SpaceX. But fate liked us that day. The fourth launch worked. T today is the is the ninth anniversary of that launch. Three, two, one, zero. We're in stage we one. Have lift off indication. We have lift off. It's a very emotional day, actually. So it's about enabling the, ex the extension of life beyond Earth. Fundamentally, the future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species than if we're not. Uh, it, you want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. Um, and that's what, uh, what being a space-faring civilization is all about. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. Um, and I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. This is the first time in the four billion year history of Earth that that has even been a possibility. You can have big dreams, but you, you, you've got to have some sense of how you can make those a reality. 
Um, you've got to make sure that success is one of the possible outcomes. Becoming a multi-planet species. Piece the hell up out of being a single planet species. And if we're building this thing to go to the moon and Mars, then why not go to other places on Earth as well? You just have to sort of decide. Let's, let's think beyond the normal stuff. When you try new things, you try this idea, that idea, a large number of them are not going to work. And that has to be okay. I, I'm a big believer in, in us becoming a space sparing civilization and ultimately extending life beyond Earth. The extension of life to multiple planets for the first time. Go, extending life to another planet uh, is a huge quantum leap. The long-term vision is to help uh, make life multi-planetary. You know, thanks to the hard work of basically, you know, the SpaceX team. You know, all you guys. I mean, that's really uh, what got us to orbit there. And there are a lot of people that thought we couldn't do it. Um, a lot, actually. <laughs> But, you know, that's the same goes. Fourth time's the charm, right? I mean, so, <laughs> so I, I mean, this, this really means a lot to SpaceX, obviously. I mean, getting to orbit, I mean, that's just a huge milestone. There's only a handful of countries on Earth that have done it. It's normally a country thing, not a company thing. So it's just an, an amazing achievement. Um, you know, the, uh, I mean, uh, my mind's kind of frazzled, so it's kind of hard for me to say anything. But, uh, man, definitely uh, this is one of the greatest days of my life, and I think probably for, for most people here. Um, it's, uh, you know, we've shown people we can do it, and this is just the first step in many. I mean, we're, we're going to, you know, get uh, Falcon 9 to orbit next year, uh, get the Dragon spacecraft going. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to be taken over for the, for the space shuttle when that retires. Um, I mean, this is, you know, we're going to do uh, a lot of things, you know, ultimately, I think even, you know, getting to Mars and, and things like that. So I think the, this is definitely, the future of SpaceX is really great. I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what else to say, because I mean, it's just like so freaking awesome, my mind's blown, so it just, uh, you know, except just like I said, re reaffirm, this is, just the, this is just the first step of many. Um, and this really opens the way for us to, uh, you know, get Falcon 9 going, get, you know, manned space flight. I mean, there's just so many cool things that, that, are, that, that are there in the future. And uh, I'm actually the chief designer of the rocket. I mean, I could tell you, I could redraw that rocket without the without the benefit of blueprints for the most part. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of like seeing my baby go up there, you know? Um, and it's, it's pretty scary. Like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in, that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. I, think I look at the future from a standpoint of, of the probabilities, it's like, it's like a branching stream of probabilities. And there are actions that we can take that affect those probabilities. Becoming a multi planet species in space bearing civilization, this is not inevitable. It's very important to appreciate this is not inevitable. If you look at uh, at the, the progress in space. In 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. Four, three, two, one, zero.
Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower clear. 1969. Plus 30 seconds. Then we had this, the space shuttle. The space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit. Mm. Then the space shuttle retired, and the United States could take no one to orbit. So that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. People are mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. By itself, degrade, actually. Mm -hmm. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they were able to make the pyramids, and they forgot how to do that. Mm -hmm. And the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. I think, I think the, the value of beauty and inspiration is, is very much underrated, no question. Um, but I want to be clear, I like, I'm not trying to be anyone's savior. Uh, that is not the... I, I'm just trying to think about the future and not be sad. SpaceX has got uh, five five thousand people, and um... it's been fifteen years to get to this point. It's taken us a long time, um, a, a lot of a lot of difficult steps along the way. Creating a company is almost like having a child. So it's sort of like, how do you say your child should not have food, even if it it ruins you? Yeah. I remember waking up the Sunday uh, before Christmas uh, on, in 2008 and thinking to myself, man, I never thought I was someone who could ever uh, be capable of a nervous breakdown. Um, and, but I, I felt this was the closest I've ever come. So many people tried to talk me out of starting a ride company. It was, it was crazy. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. And in the end, I had to invest everything. And um, I was borrowing money from friends to pay the rent. What we'd like to do is to establish a city on Mars um, and, and help make um, humanity a multi-planet species and a true space-faring civilization. That's the ultimate goal. I'm not saying we will do it. I'm just saying we're going to try. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think? I need to pack this in. Never. I don't ever give up. NASA called and told us that we'd won a one and a half billion dollar contract. If you need inspiring words, don't do it. I think wishful thinking is uh, innate uh, in the human brain. Having civilization and life as we know it extend beyond Earth to the rest of the solar system and ultimately to other star systems. That, that's, the, that's the future that's exciting and inspiring. You need, kind of, you need things like that to, make, to, 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 to be glad to wake up in the morning. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed. And we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. But life can't be just about solving problems. Like, there have to be things that are inspiring and exciting that make you glad to be alive. And ultimately, be out there among the stars. It has actually been a very difficult journey, I have to say. There is a path to do it, even if that path has a lot of danger associated with it, risk, and, and maybe 
won't succeed, why it's important, and even if the odds are that it won't succeed, it's worth trying to do it. I'm just incredibly proud of the SpaceX team for being able to, to uh, achieve this um, incredible milestone in the history of space.